What's up friends, today we are back talking about protective gear. Yep, I know, not the most exciting thing, but talking about something that's really important. So make sure you stay tuned and make sure you get a pair of gloves because I still have a couple of friends right now that are suffering from injuries that these gloves would have prevented. So stay tuned. Make my heart beat, beat super fast. All right, so why do we need gloves? Well, I talked about this briefly in the previous video that I did on gloves, but I figured I might as well reiterate because I still see people getting the same exact scars that I got when I fell the first time that I wasn't wearing gloves. Now, a lot of times in e-skate, when you fall, you tend to fall forwards off of your board, which ends up in a forwards motion, uh, kind of splayed out or you end up rolling depending on how you fall that's different from a bike where sometimes you fall off backwards and you like put your arms back um, and tend to break wrists that way but a lot of times when you fall forwards you still hit your wrist but you kind of hit at an angle and if you recall previously I talked about in my last gloves video about how having slide pucks on your hands can help your hands slide off the ground instead of catching and breaking the fall instantly. So, why gloves? Well, your hands are very important and hand wounds take forever to heal. I've been there, I've had scrapes on my hand, they hurt a lot, it sucks to use a computer mouse, it sucks to write, it sucks to drive. Basically, they're one of my least favorite injuries to have besides a, a broken bone. So. When you've got your hand all covered up like this, you've got plastic here protecting you, you've got leather here protecting you, it's just a much better time. And if you can afford them, absolutely get them. Because with these V3 gloves, there's pretty much no reason to not get them with how comfortable they are and how easy they are to use with most remotes. So to answer the question again, why protective gloves? Just get them, you're better off having them and uh, if you think they look dumb, well, suck it up. This is a dangerous sport. And if you're protecting yourself from getting hurt, the people that think you look dumb are the dumb ones. So there you go. That's why you should get protective gloves. And now I'm going to talk about the improvements from the V2 gloves to these V3 ones. So let's get into it. Some of these improvements are gonna be kind of hard to show physically. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it because I'm one of the people that has had all three versions of the gloves and uh, I'll tell you right now, the V2s did not get worn very much because of this first improvement. Now the V2 gloves were a decent design. They're far too thick, far too stiff, and uh, to be honest they just didn't work with as many gloves as I would have liked them to. And that was in a major part due to this sliding puck design. And uh, some of you keen-eyed folks might recognize this design as something that is on Knox gloves. And uh, Flatland 3D uses them too, but I don't know exactly what happened to the design of this glove, but you can't buy it anymore. And uh, my suspicion is that that might have something to do with it. But anyway, the large plastic area here made it really inflexible and it made it really hard to bend your thumb. Now we take ahead we take a step ahead and look at these new gloves. Man, these are so much better. You've got a large palm area covered in very small slide pucks. And basically what this does is it makes it so that the whole palm area of the glove is much more flexible. I'm gonna try to demonstrate that here, but basically it makes it way easier to bend your thumb down compared to the much stiffer version on this side. And to be honest, that's one of the major improvements. The rest of the maneuverability of the glove is very similar because the materials are all almost the same. Let's see if I can show you here. It's a little bit dark. The material here is the same. This is almost the same, but it has a slightly different texture on the new one. It has kind of a dimpled texture, but Pretty much the rest of the glove is the same, except the Kevlar is stitched into the fingers much better on the new ones. 
And uh, the new ones also removed some of this extra reflective strip, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But yeah, basically maneuverability is the first major upgrade, much easier to use, much more comfortable to wear, except for the armband. We'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah, big improvement on maneuverability, much easier to use the remotes and so much so that I didn't even use these gloves hardly at all. I was using the V1s all the way up until I got the V3s. So there you go, there's first major improvement. I touched briefly on the second improvement, which I believe is an improvement in, in my opinion anyway. Moving to this set of small slide pucks. I like this a lot better than these two giant ones, mainly because it spreads the load out in a much more even fashion. And if you were to fall, which I have on these gloves, it spreads the load out across your, uh, like the heel of your palm really well. And I didn't even get any bruises when I fell. So I think this design works really well. And you've got three additional ones down here that replace those brass ones. And uh, <laughs> in my experience falling on these, it was protecting my hands really well. And I think that this design will last probably less falls than the ones with the thicker plastic, but great design change. And I think it looks nice and it fits perfectly with all of the remotes now. So major upgrade there. The other upgrades to the glove are kind of quality of life things. First of all, you have a little loop here, which you can help, which can help you pull on the glove. And I use this every single time. Take the loop in your hand, pull the glove on. So much easier than having to shimmy your hand in there with the old ones. The Velcro on the back was also changed to be this large strip, which is not actually my favorite. I kind of wish it was smaller. Uh, we'll talk about that in the comfort section later. Um, so that's another thing. And then inside, uh, actually I recorded a clip on this already. I'll play that right now. These gloves actually have a sort of secret feature inside. If you go ahead underneath the wristband Velcro, you can pull out, pull open this internal pocket, which I thought was for heating packets, which I, I mean, you could put them in there, but inside here, there's, oh, where is it? There it is. There's a small strap that you can use to attach to your remote. So if you're tired of putting your lanyard on your um, remote every time you put your glove on, you can just pull out this little strap and clip it to your remote. I haven't used it yet, but some people might find it useful. The next major improvement and the final one that I'm going to talk about here is remote usability. So much better than the V2. So I got a clip for that. We'll play that right now. All right, we're just going to go ahead and give these remotes all a quick try. Not as many as last time because these are the only ones that I find myself using frequently. So we're just gonna go through them. Hoyt Puck, as with the previous versions of the gloves, fits beautifully. I actually raced at Eastgate Con using these gloves with this exact remote. This one does not have the nub throttle, but that doesn't make too much of a difference when you're wearing gloves. Feels great from the side. Good from the top. Unfortunately, with the version three or Lenite gloves, whatever you wanna call them, the thumb has a lot more flexibility. So you don't get fatigue on your thumb when you're using a thumb wheel remote, which is excellent. Moving on to the X-Way R1, R, or sorry, the R2 slash R3 remote. It's exactly the same on uh, the design. So as with the VX1, this is pretty much perfect experience. Easy to grip with that uh, leather here and suede leather feeling material here. Very easy to grip, easy to manipulate, no finger fatigue. Excellent fit as well. Next up, we got the Rebel Kit remote. This uh, remote has actually been adopted by Eovan as well for the silo, so that's interesting. But anyway, no problems here. Very comfy. 
uh, you're starting to notice a trend here and I'll confirm that for you. These gloves have fit pretty much every remote that I've tested and they fit them really well. VX4, perfect fit as well. The rear end of the VX4 fits perfectly into that grippy area right on top of the slide pucks. Feels good there. Nice finger movement, no problems, no fatigue. Excellent time. Now, these are the first gloves that I can actually use this trigger remote. Because of that additional flexibility in the thumb, I no longer have horrible fatigue when using it. And uh, it's quite comfortable, super grippy. And again, this area right here on the palm, really essential for gripping onto that remote. Fits perfectly in there, grips on nicely. And there you go. Last remote, which I actually have not picked up with these gloves yet because I, I don't use this anymore, but it's worth trying. I feel like this is the only one you're gonna have problems with still. And I am correct. This is not an ideal experience. You're still, it's better than before because the index finger is a little more flexible now too, but you're still gonna be struggling for space there. And I have a friend that races a stooge board and he found that it was a little bit hard to hold as well and uh, his finger kept getting caught on the trigger guard. So just something to be aware of. In general, this pair of gloves will be compatible with pretty much uh, every remote you can imagine on the market, especially thumb wheels. Really comfy, really easy to use. Let me know what you think. All right, now that we've talked about remote compatibility, let's just go straight into the RBEM score. Now, if you haven't noticed, I'm pretty optimistic about these gloves because they're awesome. They're the best gloves that I've tried so far. Granted, I've only been wearing export gloves, but I've seen people's experience with the Flatland gloves and uh, very brief experience with the Beyond Riders gloves, but I haven't heard much about those. Um, I have mount mountain biking gloves that I was wearing before these. So I don't have too much to compare to, but we'll get there eventually. Anyway, I'm very optimistic about these. Love these gloves, wear them on every single ride. And uh, let's start talking about the comfort. So comfort on these gloves is pretty great. I'm rating these 4.5 out of five, which is higher than both of the previous gloves. Um, I had thought the V1 gloves were the most comfortable before, and uh, they have been overtaken by these ones. So why is the comfort so good? Well. They're more maneuverable, makes it easier to wear them for long periods of time. Um, the elastic on the fingers is just tight enough for me to not let too much air in. And uh, they're decently warm as well. Your finger and index, or your thumb and index finger get pretty cold if it's cold outside, but there's actually some new gloves from x that are full fingered as well as just uh, half fingers. So you should check those out at the website. I also have a discount code um, I'll put it up now over there, RBEM, and I'll talk about it later. But anyway, comfort on these is great. Um, the only qualm that I have with them, the reason that they're not five, is this gigantic Velcro strap. And this is a major problem with, believe it or not, the export winter jacket and uh, watches for that matter. I can't wear my watch when I wear these gloves because the wrist part goes up so high. Um, but basically with the jacket, it has elastic that goes around and I pull that down over this Velcro. It's just not super comfortable. It grips onto my wrist a little bit tighter than I'd like. And this Velcro tends to catch on the shirt as well, but wearing it with a shirt is much better because it doesn't have that elastic. So comforts four out of five overall, great time, better than the other two gloves before it. So there you go. For the quality on these gloves, is extremely high and I'm going to be giving them a 4.8 out of 5. Now there's only two tiny things that I have issues with on these gloves. Uh, one of those is that there's some threads sticking out in a couple little areas on my slide pucks and on the back here. Um, pretty much the only visible thing and then the other one is that some people have reported that these straps have come off on theirs. I know uh, X is looking into fixing that. Mine have stayed on pretty well, even though I pull them on every time. So 
I guess check yours and if they look like they're loose, uh, maybe sew them up a little bit better yourself or uh, ask X about it. But overall, the quality is amazing. The stitching is great. Everything is sewed on really well. The Velcro is sewed on well. All the hems are done, especially around the fingers here. On the As I was saying, the uh, hems, I don't know what you want to call it, the stitching at the ends of the fingers here is much better on the new gloves. On the previous ones, it was just kind of fraying and it didn't look very good. So anyway, pretty much everything about the quality on these is improved and uh, all the materials are super good. Nice thick materials, good strong seams and pretty much no complaints at all besides those two little nitpicks. Now, impact protection on these, it's pretty moderate. I mean, gloves can only do so much to save your hands, but there is some impact absorbing foam inside of these gloves. And uh, because of the larger region to spread out load, I rated these a tiny bit higher than the previous ones, but overall decent, uh, they get a 4.1 out of five. Now, slide protection on these is great. And uh, if you've looked at some of the B-roll of these gloves, you almost can't even tell that I've fallen on them besides the scrapes on the slide pucks. The leather, it looks almost untouched, which is kind of crazy. I guess it's just the way that I fell, but um, yeah, slide protection on these is great. Trust me, this little scrape on this plastic would be a giant gash in your hand and uh, probably get filled with dust and little pebbles from the street. So <laughs> do not take that lightly. Slide protection is very important and these do it super well. So they get a 4.2 out of five because they are slightly better with this improved slide puck design than the, <laughs> the V2s. Now, visibility is something where these took a big hit. I don't really know what's going on uh, versus the V2s. We have these tiny little strips here uh, that kind of reflect a little bit of light, but I, I don't know what kind of reflective material this is, but it doesn't, it doesn't reflect that much for me. Um, and there's this tiny strip here. Other than that, there's nothing compared to the much higher amount of coverage of this gray area, which is also not super reflective, but it's better than the V3. So I don't know, maybe if there's a V4, we look at adding a little bit more reflection, but overall, not much here. So uh, I'm only gonna give these 1.5 out of five. Now, style is a super subjective category, but I love the style of these gloves. They are much better than the V2. And well, I do like the colors of the V1. Uh, a lot of people did not. So take with that what you will, but I love the styling on the V3s. I wear them for every ride, like I said. So uh, they get a 4.5 out of five. And I don't really know what else I would like to see improved besides this giant Velcro thing being a little bit smaller. I think it looks a little bit, a little bit funny. It does a job of course, but could be better. All right, so price. On these gloves, they're going for $70 currently, which for me is a steal for keeping your hands safe because I use my hands all the time for my engineering work and computer work and editing and cameras and I need them to not be scraped up. So $70 uh, with my discount code, you'll get a bit of a discount on it. But to me, it seems like a pretty good price. Um, the prices for gloves vary wildly out there on the market. So if you have some other ones in mind, feel free to compare, but I think it's a pretty good deal. And they get a, I forgot the number. I'm gonna put it on the screen. I think I have four out of five. It's a 4.1 out of five because they're the same price as the V2s, but they're better. So a little bit better value. All right, now the most important category for gloves besides the protection is the maneuverability for me and that's why it's worth 10 points. And for these guys, I've been raving about the whole video, but they're super maneuverable, really easy to use. Um, obviously you do sacrifice a little bit because of the flat, uh, the plastic area and the fact that there's Kevlar and leather in here, but those are all necessary to keep your hands safe. So uh, these are probably about as maneuverable as the V1s, except there's a lot more protection. Um, at least it feels like there's a lot more protection. The materials feel thicker and feel better and more durable. So these are going to get a seven out of 10 for new maneuverability, which is the same as the V1s, except they have lots more protection. So there you go. That's all the categories and uh, we'll add up the total score and do an outro. 
So the RBEM score comes out to a total of 34.7. Now that is higher than both of the previous gloves by a little bit. And to be honest, I wouldn't even want to buy the previous gloves if they were available knowing that this was out there. So if you're looking for a set of e-skate gloves, or I suppose you could wear these biking, I don't know how it would work out with these slide pucks, but if you're looking for e-skate gloves, these are probably gonna be the ones to get. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's any other ones you guys want me to try, um, and I'll try to get my hands on those in the future. But overall, thoughts on these? Great gloves, great quality, good slide protection. Just a good time overall. If you're interested in checking out the Xboard offerings, including the uh, Commander and the Lesquire, which are the full finger glove and the half finger gloves, check it out on skateexport.com. Here's my discount code. These gloves were sent to me for review, but uh, I've been with Export for quite a while and they've been producing consistently good products. So I'm happy to continue supporting them, especially when the protective gear works so well through crashes and uh, different kinds of events. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found this video informative and helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments what you want me to do in the future. And uh, I gotta get going on the next video because we've got a lot of videos coming up here in the near future. Oh, one more thing. I met Xavier at EskateCon. It was a super great time. We hung out for a bit, talked about equipment and uh, he got to watch me race. And uh, he spent some time at his booth and Hopefully some of you guys were able to meet him there. I thought it was super cool seeing uh, him in person finally after <laughs> repping the products for quite a while. But anyway, again, thank you for watching and uh, stay safe, keep on riding and peace out.